Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to our presentation on homeopathic remedies for sleep and stress for the Holistic Moms Network of Fairfield County and the Holistic Moms Network of New Haven County. And this presentation was uh, sponsored by Boyle. So as always, my standard disclaimer, I welcome you to our friends and family homeopathy community, practicing since 1994, special love for homeopathy, strive to empower, educate, and guide families that are looking to incorporate safe and effective, over-the-counter, non-prescription homeopathic remedies in their well care routine. And all the materials that are being provided in this presentation are for educational purposes only, not intended as a substitute for a physician's consultation. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions that you might have regarding a medical condition. And always consult a qualified physician prior to taking any remedies, medications, or supplements. A little bit about me. I have a bachelor's degree in homeopathy from the Mumbai University, both certified by the Council for Homeopathic Certification as a CCH, which is a certified classical homeopath, registered with NASH, which is the North American Society of Homeopaths, and I'm a lifetime member of the National Center for Homeopathy. Since I'm a homeopath, not an MD, families that come to me for guidance must retain the services of their primary care physician for appropriate evaluations, diagnostics, checkups, referrals to specialists, if needed. My relationship with families that come to me is that of an educator, not a prescriber, and it's your choice to use or not use the information that I give you. As with anything that you use for yourself, your family, you must research, find all the answers to all your queries, and never disregard medical advice or delay seeking such advice. So what is homeopathy? Homeopathy is a safe, gentle, and natural system of healing that works with your body to restore itself to improve the overall health. It's safe to use even for small children, even for pets. It doesn't have any side effects, it's affordable, and the remedies are all sourced from natural substances. It is, there are thousands of positive outcome pre, in preclinical as well as clinical studies. And it's been shown to be effective for over 200 years in use for both acute as well as chronic conditions. So it's federally recognized form of medicine and it is regulated by the FDA. So homeopathic remedies are safe and expensive, non-toxic, easily available over the counter, non-prescription at most health food stores. They can be administered to babies, pregnant women, as well as the elderly under the supervision of a qualified homeopath. Again, no side effects if a carefully chosen remedy is administered in the right potency and in the right dosage. 30C is considered safe to use for infants, children, adults, elderly, pregnant women, even your pets. So this, I got this picture from a Boron display at Whole Foods. So you can see some of the common remedies and you'll get like the main indication for each of the remedies. But these remedies can be used for uh, other issues as well. So for example, if you see here, Arsenicum Alp for symptoms of food poisoning, but Arsenicum Alp is also very effective for symptoms of allergies, and for a lot of other issues. And similarly, if you look over here, there is Apis mellifica for allergies, for any, uh, for bee stings, redness, swelling. So, you know, it has many indications other than the main indication, which is um, given on this display. So quick review on the dosing. So when you use a remedy, one tiny pill is considered as one dose. And if you take the whole bottle at one time, that is also considered as one dose. With homeopathic remedies, it is not the number of pills, but it's the number of times that you take the remedy, which is more important. Um, remedies are easily available over the counter at most health food stores like Whole Foods, Vitamin Shop. It can also be ordered online and they don't cost much. You know. A remedy costs anywhere from five to ten dollars. Um, chronic diseases are usually treated with infrequent repetitions of a high potency of the deep acting constitutional or a state remedy 
whereas acute conditions are treated with frequent repetitions of low potencies. One can start by giving one to three doses in an acute situation of the indicated remedy, five to 30 minutes apart on a neutral, clean mouth, and then decrease the frequency and then give a dose every one to three hours as better. And then you can taper to twice a day, once a day, and stop as symptoms are improving. The constitutional remedy is chosen, taking into consideration your physical, mental, and emotional state. And your homeopath or naturopath will be able to guide you to the right remedy and the right dosage if you are under constitutional care. So diving right into remedies for stress. So these three are my go-to remedies for emotional first aid. The very first remedy is the rescue remedy. The rescue remedy is a Bach combination remedy. It's um, the Bach flower senses. And this remedy offers a calming boost whenever you're unable to narrow down to a specific remedy. So a couple of uh, doses of the rescue remedy are amazing in a situation of fear, panic, shock, uh, where you are kind of unable to narrow down which remedy to pick, this is the one that you can start with. The next remedy to consider is Ignatia Mala. Ignatia is my go-to remedy for any acute grief, loss, uh, disappointment, emotional upheaval, drama, hysteria, moodiness, rejection, lovesickness, anything that happens that hurts you or you know just makes you sad and upset um, a couple of doses of ignatia will set you back on track next remedy for emotional first aid is aconite a um, lot of us know aconite it's my favorite remedy to nip illnesses in the bud you know i always say that at the first sign of a cold or if there is exposure to cold and you have the runny nose if you take aconite it will nip the cold in the bud but not much is known about using aconite in as emotional first aid. I actually call aconite as the arnica for emotions. So for any sudden onset of emotions, um, sudden onset of symptoms of any emotional situation, where there's acute panic, palpitations, sharpness of breath, trembling, perspiration, shock, fainting, fear of dying, aconite in Apples, one to three doses given will help immediately in that situation. So intro to single remedies um, for sleep and stress by Boyron. I'm going to share a two and a half minute video by Joet Calibris. She goes over briefly and very precisely for the remedies that you can use uh, that'll help you with sleep as well as stress. Hi, I'm Joette Calabrese and I'm a homeopathic consultant and I live in Western New York. Stress can be motivating, but it can also be negative and destructive. Women are particularly susceptible as they juggle careers, child rearing, and household responsibilities. Stress and sleep issues also go hand in hand. Too much stress can make us anxious and tense, thus leading to sleep problems. Aconitum napalis, which is monkshood, is a medicine for panicked reaction or any shock to the system. It's useful for someone who becomes very fearful in any situation. The heart beats faster, they're full of anguish, there's restlessness, and the person may have difficulty concentrating, or fears of the dark, or even just darkened rooms. Coffea cruda, which is coffee, coffee bean. It relieves sleeplessness with worries or happy anticipation, overactive thoughts, and hypersensitivity to pain. It's tailored to someone who simply can't fall asleep upon retiring. Gelsemium. This is yellow jasmine. Gelsemium relieves apprehension with trembling, drowsiness, headaches, general weakness, the feeling like the mind is blank. So when a child becomes sick before a school play or an event, when the teen is worried about an exam, or when you have a presentation at work, gelsemium can help provide relief. Ignatia Amara, it's made from St. Ignatius bean. 
It relieves symptoms of stress with hypersensitivity to pain and smell from emotions and stress in general improved by distraction. It's the premier remedy for grief. Depression after or during grief will be soothed by Ignatia. Grief is a natural means of processing loss, but a homeopathic medicine can act as a gentle stimulus in overcoming the sufferings of loss. Califosforicum, potassium phosphate, it's a cell salt. Califos relieves physical and intellectual fatigue due to overexertion with sleeplessness and headaches. When nervous excitement or worry causes sleeplessness, it may help to calm the mind and therefore help folks to sleep better. Homeopathy takes practice, but once you become comfortable with it, you'll find that it works very well for your family. So that in a nutshell was um, all the important remedies for stress and sleep, stress and um, sleep. So now I'm going to just elaborate a little bit more. We've gone over aconite for acute anxiety, emotional first aid, uh, physical symptoms like restlessness, palpitations, perspiration, anguish, worry. All of those will be helped by aconite. Jalsamium for the apprehension, the anticipatory anxiety, feeling unprepared, nervous, with a headache, tightness in the neck and back muscles, um, lethargy, eyes feeling heavy. Um, it's the remedy to take before um, flying. It's the remedy to take before, um, before an event. It's for stage fright. If you have people coming over for uh, a dinner, if you have to travel, this is the remedy to take to take the edge off your anxiety. Next remedy is arsenicum alb. Arsenicum alb has a lot of fear of death, restlessness, anguish, fear of disease. Uh, they are the ones who are like constantly like cleaning and putting everything neatly away. They worry about getting sick. They worry about exposure to illness. Um, so all of those symptoms uh, respond very well to the remedy arsenicum alb. Then you have nutswamica. So nutswamica is for insomnia from overindulgence of stimulants like tea, coffee, alcohol, tobacco. Uh, this is a typical type A personality, but Natswamika can also be used if there is dietary indiscretion. You know, you had a late meal or if you ate something that you normally don't eat or you had a drink too many and then you're unable to sleep or you're stressed, the Natswamika would help you. Um, I can't end this um, particular section without talking about Argentum nitricum. Argentum nitricum is a great remedy for anticipatory anxiety. Um, the key difference between using Argentum and a remedy like Gelsamium is the craving for sweets. So if your anxiety pushes you into uh, that late night bowl of ice cream or piece of cake or cookie, the Argentum nitricum is the remedy for you. Uh, some of the other remedies that are for um, insomnia and uh, stress or stress-related insomnia. Um, first one is Cocculus Indicus. It's the remedy for like jet lag. So if you are uh, traveling and you're in a different time zone and then you are unable to sleep, this is the remedy for you. It's also the remedy for night watching, meaning for people who are up late at night doing um, studying for exam, taking care of an infant, or you know just working late and then unable to sleep coculus is the remedy for you coculus is also a remedy for motion sickness coculus is the remedy if you fall asleep but and then you wake up in the middle of the night and are just unable to go back to sleep a couple of doses of coculus will set your sleep rhythm back to normal coffee cruda coffee cruda is um, a remedy where your mind is overactive and you simply can't fall asleep because of all the thoughts that are racing through your mind. So if you can't get your mind to stop or just turn off and go and let you go to sleep, coffee akruda or potentized coffee is the remedy for you. Kali Foss. Kali Foss is for physical, mental fatigue, exhaustion from overexertion. So when you have done too much and now you're exhausted, tired physically and mentally, but now that 
but now that is causing your sleeplessness and you just can't sleep. Or when you're like overwhelmed and it's the remedy for caregivers when you have sick people in the house or you know, you're taking care of somebody in the hospital and you just are not being able to take care of yourself. For that state of mind and body, the Kali Paws will help take the edge off. Um, Passiflora. Passiflora, I have had great success in using this remedy in the elderly and the feeble, where you're just overworked mentally and physically, and you're just unable to sleep. Um, the Passiflora will really help people. Our own temperament, mood, and daily pressures greatly influence how we interpret and respond to everybody else's behavior. So a lot depends on how you perceive things. So it's so important to take care of yourself so that you can be this happy, pleasant person uh, to be around. So as you can see, this is my workspace, pretty much spring through fall. I sit outside and I answer all my emails or I talk to patients in my yard. And that's exactly where I'm recording this uh, presentation also for all of you. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is a quality or a state of being conscious or aware of something. It's a mental state which is achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. So we are all humans and be kind to yourself. It's okay to feel all the emotions, but we don't have to react or we don't have to act out on everything that we feel. We don't have to try to remedy every wrong that we perceive is happening to us. So instead of being participants, I encourage everyone to be a spectator. So if you see something happening to you, around you, just take a step back and observe before you react to it. So now I'm going to go over um, remedies for emotional upheaval. Emotional upheaval, this happens mostly in women. So sometimes in men as well, but I see it more in women. We seem to put everybody else above us. And that is probably the reason why uh, we go through so much of ups and downs in our emotional state. The first remedy to consider for that is falsatilla. So if you are the kind of person who finds it very difficult to say no, and you're like the doormat that everybody can just walk over and you feel terrible saying no to anybody, even if it means bending over backwards, falsatilla is the remedy for you. These people ha are like, are very childish. They get easily discouraged. They are constantly craving um, that people like them, people approve of them. They are seeking that approval from everybody and that ends up being a situation where you know they can't take care of themselves and then they become overwhelmed and they are highly highly emotional people um sepia is the exact opposite of falsatilla meaning they are the moody irritable sarcastic kind of individuals um it's one of the top leading remedies for pms where um, they become irritable. Um, it's been called the washerwoman's remedy, where a woman will end up doing all the household work and will not have the help that she needs, and that will make her very, very cranky and irritable. Very, very sensitive uh, individuals. And then you have lachesis. So lachesis is the remedy for the perimenopausal, menopausal um, state of your life where you become sad, restless, you don't want to do anything, and um, or when you are with people, you become either very talkative or you don't want to talk to anybody at all. So that state of mind where there is a lot of uh, jealousy, being suspicious, that is lachesis. So I always like to, you know, intersperse a few happy pictures in my presentation and more so this presentation because it is on stress it is so important to find what gives you joy and take some time out of the day for that activity 
that activity for me is dance. So, um, you know, I always take time during the day, whether it's a Zumba class or whether I'm dancing with my friends or, you know, my dance size with loved ones project, which I started April of this year. So, you know, find time for yourself, find time for any activity uh, that gives you joy. So proceeding to the last three remedies for emotional upheaval, Ignatia. We already talked about Ignatia when we were talking about uh, emotional first aid. So it's the remedy for an acute situation when you are hypersensitive to things that you perceive are hurtful to you. So, you know, somebody says something and they may not even mean it, but if you perceive it as something that hurts you, the Ignatia will help take that edge off and it will help you to not sulk or be sad and move on from that situation pretty quickly. Now, if you, are, if you are the kind of person that tends to brood about unpleasant things that have happened or have been said to you, or you, know, you mull over stress from past conflicts, something that was said to you like 15, 20 years back, a family member that said something, they don't even remember it, but you can seem to forget and have an elephant's memory for it, couple of doses of natrimur or common salt will help you move past that. Last remedy in this list is phosphorus. Phosphorus is for the impact. When you feel everybody else's pain, you have that sensitivity or susceptibility to all external impressions, you know, um, be it light, sound, odors, touch, emotions, electrical changes, thunderstorms, um, you're clairvoyant, you can literally sense other people, whether they are being nice to you, not being nice to you, ignoring you, you take on everybody else's energy. If that's the kind of person you are, or you know somebody like that in your family, the phosphorus is the remedy for them. So phosphorus is, um, they are the life of the party. They are very happy people. They are the, you know, the light in the group of friends, but they can also go downhill very quickly if they perceive um, negative energy from anyone. So positive energy will uplift them, but if there is negative energy, that can bring them down also pretty quickly. So if you had to buy one book on um, homeopathy for stress, this is the one. It's the Bible for, it's a Bible and um, it's called The Homeopathic Guide to Stress by Miranda Castro. Um, it covers every remedy under the sun and every situation that you might have in your life. And there I am with Miranda. She's my queen. Um, this was the first time I met her at the Joint American Homeopathic Conference. And this is the second time I met her at the Joint American um, Homeopathic conference and I learn so much from her every time I see her and she gives me so much so much positive energy to continue what I'm doing and she's such an asset to the homeopathic community. Love you Miranda. So this is from an article that um, Miranda had written right after 9-11 and it holds true even today. So these are the healing remedies for traumatic stress. Um, according to Miranda, like phosphorus, causticum is also a remedy for those that suffer as a, result, as a result of the suffering of others, but only much more deeply. So they're the ones who will actually go out and do something about a situation that touches them or moves them very deeply. The next remedy that Miranda brings to our attention is calcarea carb. Calcarea carb is, for, is a remedy for those people that are badly affected by sad and tragic stories because they have very active imagination. They respond to the stress by becoming deeply anxious. They start worrying about the future, about bad things happening, especially to those that are close to them. And this then wears them out, causing them to become physically sluggish and emotionally depressed. They become sleepless at night and drowsy during the day. So I heard a lot of people who attended the two workshops say where, you know, they seem to be fine and then their spouse or a friend or somebody comes home, turns on the TV, or if they haven't been watching TV, they come and they share the news of all the horrible things that are happening in the world right now. And that brings them down. So when sad and tragic stories affect you, 
and that causes you worry and sleeplessness, Calcarea cob is the remedy for you. We already talked about Cocculus indicus. I'm just going to add what Miranda has to say about this remedy. People needing Cocculus worry compulsively about their loved ones, and this worrying can keep them from sleeping at night. And they become exhausted. The world seems to slow down. Nothing seems real. You can become confused, anxious, and dizzy with exhaustion. The last remedy on this list is for traumatic stress is nitric acid. These, the, what sets nitric acid apart from all of the other remedies we have discussed is that there is this anger in the people that need nitric acid. They are exhausted and they are angry. Their anger is extreme. They are sensitive, their sensitive, compassionate nature cannot com comprehend what has happened. So these are the people that you will see in the rallies. So if you see them, if you see people holding up a placard or a sign and protesting peacefully, that's the person that needs causticum. And if you see somebody that's in your face and yelling and shouting and screaming and being violent, they need the nitric acid. So that's the difference between these two people who are very affected by whatever is happening around socially. Causticum will protest peacefully, but the person that needs nitric acid will not be able to contain their anger. So you will see a physical expression of what they are feeling inside. So life is 10% what happens to us and 90% is how we react to it. So just a gentle reminder that we have to learn to become observers instead of participants in everything that happens to us. Take a step back, observe before you react to it. There's no need to give a knee-jerk reaction to everything that happens or everything that is said to you. So remedies for anger. So I heard that said a um, number of times at both the, both the workshops, uh, the Fairfield County chapter as well as the New Haven chapter, uh, chapter that, you know, we get angry a lot. So what are the remedies that can help you with stress that leads to anger when your response to stress is to be angry, to get very angry? So one of the remedies we already went over, which is nitric acid. The other remedies in this list are, first one is bryonia, when you become exceedingly irritable, Bryonia has been called the grumpy bear. You snap at everyone. A couple of doses of Bryonia will bring a person's pleasant self out of hiding. The next remedy that I like to put in this is sulfur. And the reason why sulfur is in here is because sulfur is like my go-to remedy for procrastination for a person that's really messy and has illusions of intellect, but they are aversion to do any work they have aversion to bathing. They are the racket, racket philosopher, meaning you, they talk big, but there's not much action. And then with that comes that expression of anger. So if you know somebody that is pushing things on the back burner, not getting stuff done, and then not being able to control themselves, the remedy for them is sulfur. Um, I can see everybody smiling and thinking of all of their teenagers who are in that state. And yet sulfur is uh, one of the leading remedies for teenagers. Um, the next one is Matswamika. We went over that before as well. Um, this is for the type A personality, um, wine, women, and work remedy. But I see this remedy work even for women who are you know, very driven, ambitious, and like things done a certain way. And that can lead them to become um, angry, upset, irritable. Remedies that swamp. Stephis agria. This is literally my most favorite remedy for anger. So this remedy covers the whole spectrum. Resentment, anger, sensing that everything is unfair. Um, if you're angry and you need to bite your tongue to keep the peace, this is a remedy for you. If you are unable to bite your tongue and you say something and then later on regret it and feel bad about having said it because it really is not going to make a difference to the situation, Staphysegre is still the remedy for you. So if you sense something is unfair, 
and you want to say something but you don't want to say something because it's not going to make a big huge difference a couple of doses of stuff is like yeah will help you stay calm and not express those inhibitions that you have but in case you do lose your temper but later on feel terrible about it the remedy still is stuff is like yeah so this is a remedy to take if you are going to be having that unpleasant conversation with your mom mother in law friend where you know that the conversation is not going to go in the direction you want it to go in but you want to stay quiet to keep the peace if you keep sipping on the stephisagria water you will be all right at all the next remedy is lycopodium lycopodium are easily angered they cannot endure any opposition or contradiction the key note for people needing lycopodium is that they are very respectful of people in authority but they seem to take out all their anger on their inferiors so these are the people who will not be able to say anything to their boss or to their you know senior people but they will take out their anger at their family members at their friends on their children on their spouse so that is the person that can will respond very well to like this so we went over the single remedies Now I'm going to just quickly touch upon some of the combination remedies that um, Boyron has to offer us. Um, the first one is stress calm. It is a combination remedy for um, common signs of stress, irritability, restlessness, fatigue, upset, upset stomach, sleep problems. Uh, this used to be available before. It was called Sedalia. Um, this remedy is a combination of low potency aconite, belladonna, calendula, chalcedonium, jequirity, and viburnum. So the question that will be asked is like, when do I use this versus when do I use a single remedy? If you ask a homeopath like me, or most classical homeopaths would prefer that you take a single remedy based on your symptoms. But supposing you are completely new to remedy, new to homeopathy, and you find it difficult to pick a remedy. this is a great starting phase for you so you can try um a combo remedy like stress calm um another another remedy that i already mentioned in the beginning of the presentation was the uh, rescue remedy which is a bark essence calm uh, bark essence combination so that is available to you this is available to you so you know while you are on your journey to learning more about homeopathy and becoming confident in using single remedies this is a great uh, way for you to kind of get started and um, try homeopathy so again so these are the two um combos that boyron offers for peaceful days restful nights you have stress calm for daytime and then you have sleep calm for night time so this is the uh, sleep calm and this is for relief of occasional sleeplessness including restless sleep intermittent waking sleep disruption from worries or exhaustion so if you were to ask me i would definitely say use a single remedy but again like i said if you are not sure which one fits your state of mind or symptoms this is a great place to start you can try this one it used to be available as sleep aid or quietude and now it is being sold uh, under the name of sleep calm it has hyoscyamus nux muscata passiflora stramonium all in very low potencies and now coming to the last uh, boyron combo that is sleep calm for kids this comes as liquid doses um this has a lot of remedies in low potency this chamomile gel samium hyoscyamus calibrum passiflora stramonium and it also has the purified alcohol water and again this can be used for children 3 ages and over you can give one while or one dose at bedtime and in during the night if they're up you can give up to two more doses of this remedy so this was our uh, picture from our meeting last night i had a great time with these uh, ladies it was nice to be able to meet in person after such a long time um we did some dancing and we went over 
all these remedies. We, I got to learn so much from um, these lovely ladies. This is the Holistic Moms Network chapter on New Haven County. And they celebrated nine years of um, being So how do I learn more about homeopathy? Um, join a local homeopathic study group, attend a workshop, like the National Center for Homeopathy's Facebook page. You can like my Think Homeopathy First uh, Facebook page. You can also join my hashtag paid forward Think Homeopathy First group by supporting the Holistic Moms Network or the National Center for Homeopathy with your membership and just email the receipt to me. Um, you can email me at yashi at yahoo.com for the NCH discount code, ask questions. Be an informed patient. Take control of your and your family's health. Um, this is a great link to download free books on homeopathy. I'll be putting all those links in the description below. These are some of the websites I trust. If you are new to homeopathy, I highly recommend that everybody take uh, Mary Espinall's free hashtag newbie course by going to her website and clicking on www.homeopathyworld.com memberships h1061. And again, I'll put this link as well uh, in the description below. Uh, remedyseeker.com, that's Mary Espinall's website, um, treasure trove of information, drhomeo.com, homeopathyforwomen.org. Even though the name of the website is Homeopathy for Women, it has so much information that I feel like I don't need to make a website because any, anything and everything that I would want to put out there is on her website. Uh, you have homeopathyworks.com, Miranda Castro, love Miranda. Uh, again, she has a lot of free resources on her website. Um, she sells a lot of um, remedy kits as well that you can order, um, homeopathychoice.org. Then you have the National um, Center for Homeopathy's page, which is homeopathycenter.org, Council for Homeopathic Certification, North American Society for Homeopaths. These two websites have a directory of homeopaths if you want to find a homeopath um, in your area. So that brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much uh, for attending the webinar last week and attending in person this week. I love the Holistic Moms Network. I've been uh, presenting for them since 2013, and I have learned so much from them. You know, I brought homeopathy to the table, but I have learned and gained so much uh, from being a part of uh, that organization. If you have any questions, uh, please do reach out to me. You can email me, you can find me on Facebook. Um, let your journey into homeopathy, to learning homeopathy, begin use this as a starting point think homeopathy first and pay it forward by helping everyone thank you again so much